A little organisation can go a long way towards making your mixing session more productive. It can save time by minimising the need to constantly open and close panes or zoom and scroll the workspace to locate tracks or navigate the song. The more you streamline your workflow, the easier it will be for you to focus on finding a place in the mix for each specific sound or instrument. So let's begin by looking at using track stacks to create submixes. As you build an arrangement, you may find yourself layering multiple instruments and vocal tracks to get a fuller sound. Modern pop productions often use short sound effects in strategic positions in the arrangement to keep renewing the excitement throughout the song. All those elements add up and increase the track count. Without organisation, the tracks view can quickly become bloated and make trying to find the tracks you want to adjust frustrating. In Logic, track stacks allow you to display a group of tracks as a single track in the tracks area. The stack can be opened when you need to access individual tracks. I'm using this project called Lights On, which will be made available to you. And if you look at the last track at the bottom of the tracks area, you'll see that Amy Falsetto is track 86. So this project has 86 tracks, but you don't see 86 tracks here because some of these are track stacks. So let's just go up to Live Drums and just click the Disclosure Triangle here on the track header and we'll, say, we'll see that the track stack opens and that there are 11 subtracks for all the microphones used to record the drum kit. Click the triangle again to close the track stack. Now let's open all the track stacks to see all 86 tracks. So on any track stack now, if you Option click, so hold down the Option key and click a Disclosure Triangle all five track stacks open and we can see we have 86 tracks. Now over in the tracks view menu bar to the right over here click the vertical auto zoom button. Even at this low vertical zoom level you may not see all 86 tracks at once so feel free to scroll and take a look Let's have a quick listen. Okay, so let's create a track stack for the green and blue backup vocals here. So we're going to click track 80 the disto uh, vocal track header here so click here and then press and hold shift and click Amy falsetto and you'll then select all of those tracks now head on up to track and about halfway down you'll see something called create track stack and the shortcut is shift command and D and click that and when you get the track stack dialog, make sure the summon stack is selected and click create or press return. Now all the selected backup vocal tracks are packed into a track stack. You'll later use this to uh, process all the backing vocals together. And we're going to rename it Hayes. Oops. Click an empty area in the workspace or press Shift D to deselect all regions and press Z and that then zooms all tracks in vert vertically to fill up the workspace. When mixing projects with many tracks, navigating the tracks view can be a challenge when the mixer pane is open at the bottom of the workspace. Now we will use two screen sets to save different window layouts. One screen set will display your main window and the other will include your mixer. As you work on the mix you can recall each of the screen sets using key commands. At the top of the screen and the main menu bar here you'll see the screen set menu being displayed and it's currently display, displaying screen set 1. So click the number 1 to open the screen set menu 
and the menu lists only one screen set with a default name of tracks. To create a new screen set you only have to press a number key. So I'm going to close the screen set menu and I'm going to press the number 2 and that opens a new main window of a different size and a different zoom level from screen set 1. So I'm going to go to Window, Mixer, and I'm going to open a mixer. And a mixer window opens on top of the main window. So you're up, you won't need the main window in screen set 2, so let's close it. And the way to do it is to click it, and either click that red function there, or use Command W to close it. And now we can make the mixer bigger by clicking this function here. And now the mixer window occupies the full width of the screen. If I now go to the screen set menu, I'll see that screen set two is mixer and screen set one is tracks. So if screen set one is recalled, you'll see the main window. And if screen set two is recalled, you'll see the mixer. Now by default, screen sets are unlocked. So you can open multiple windows, adjust their sizes and positions, open the desired panes, choose different tools and so on and the screen set will memorize your layout. So if I control option drag around any region to zoom in, so let's go back to one, control option and drag. And now I toggle between two and one. You'll see that it memorizes my previous setting. If I want to lock a screen set, so let's just zoom back out again, and it won't let me do that. So there we go. If I want to lock it, I go up to the number, and here where it says lock, I now lock it in this position. So if I do what I just did, which was to zoom, and then I go to screen set two, and back to one again, the screen set returns back to where I locked it, the position where I locked it. We can customize screen sets as well. So let's go to the mixer, so I'll press two. And after making decisions during a mixing session, you might want to quickly locate components that you need on the channel strip in the mixer. However, by default, the channel strip in the mixer window shows nearly all the available channel strip components. Because you won't need to access some of them, you can hide them. So in the mixer window, if you go to view and configure channel strip, components, configure channel strip components, and in the shortcut menu now you can deselect. So for example, I can deselect the audio device control because I'm not recording. I can deselect um, MIDI effects. If I'm not using MIDI effects, I can I'll turn uh, on maybe the VCA, and which we'll talk about later, and so on. So we can choose which we turn on and turn off. It's obviously not advisable to turn off functions you'll be needing, such as the gain reduction meter, so the compression meter, the uh, audio effects, the sends, the outputs, the groups, all of these sort of mixing tools you'll need, so leave those turned on. Uh, one other thing you can do actually is over here, you'll see you've got a narrow channel strip button, but you can also widen that uh, slightly. And to avoid any further changes, let's lock that screen set now. So two locked screen sets, one and two.